all right so now we learned a lot about the dependency injection and hopefully you would have already practiced or googled about the dependency injection in our uh, last lecture while we were discussing about it so please go ahead and once again look at the video if you have not really watched that because that's something very important as a stepping stone dependency injection in this particular lecture as well all right so as you can see over here on the spring boot test that we have we are already doing a kind of dependency injection uh, in our earlier lecture and we tried failing a test while we actually commented this home page and it was throwing us an error and if you don't remember it again because it's been some time right now so if i just try to run this particular piece of test you will see that the context load is actually going to fail because the dependency of the home page is not being resolved resolved and it's going to throw us a null pointer exception over here because it's been called on the click login and because this dependency is not being passed it's throwing us an error so we have to do some sort of uh, dependency resolution or dependency injection so in order to do the dependency injection is what the spring boot majorly famous for because it's it's an ioc container framework and spring basically itself is like a framework of dependency injection resolutions and it does all the magics for us so we're going to see how it actually works in a nutshell so basically let's go to the uh, spring boot application itself and i will show you what i really mean here so if you remember you know earlier lecture we we're talking about the whole thing that the execution starts for an application to start it actually starts from this guy the spring boot application so if you try running the spring boot application uh, in spring boot you will see that the application is actually running for you over here it has started the application and it has quit because there is nothing to actually execute right uh, it's just running like a plain test and there is nothing to run and it's just quit without any without doing anything for us but now let's say if i want to create a class here i'm going to call this as car probably and within this particular car i'm gonna write a method probably uh, get car and this get car is gonna just print us the car detail probably Toyota car something like that and then I'm actually gonna create a con probably a constructor here uh, which is also going to do a car instantiated something like that I'm just gonna save it and then if I come back to the Spring Boot, as I told you that the Spring Boot application is actually running based on this particular run method, but actually all these are running in the, what is called as an application context for us. That's what I told even in the last lecture while we were discussing. So if you just hit this run, you can see that it's all running on the configurable application context. And if you click this configurable application context, it extends the application context over here. So basically it's all application context and it's where Spring knows like what are the uh, objects to be resolved or all the components to be resolved. And now I'm talking about components. And I will tell you what I really mean. So basically this run is gonna return as the context, which is nothing but the application context. So I'm just going to return this application context of application context is equal to the spring run like that and then i'm going to say application context dot get bean so this is the method which actually as they're talking about in, in spring boot everything is like bean bean is nothing but an object that you are dealing with so you can actually call this get bean method and here you can actually pass the name of the bean it can be a string or it can be a class so the car is the bean that we're talking about the car dot class we can get this bean something like this and we can also let's say var car is equal to and car dot get car so i'm just going to do this guy over here so within this application context i'm going to get the bean of car because just trying to get this particular object and as i told you spring boot is gonna do a dependency injection of all the objects which is sitting on the particular context which is sitting on the particular class path 
and again something i'm talking about class path here don't worry about it basically if there is any spring boot application exists there it scans the path which is anything but the class path for you there is something called as component scan um, which scans all the objects uh, classes for you uh, but i'm not going to go deep again on that again it's a big concept so i'm just going to leave it for now and now if i try running it you would expect to see some sort of um, initialization but you get an error here and it says no such bean definition exception even though we get the bean of car dot class even though it's sitting on the class path why are we getting this error no such bean definition exception well the reason being this particular car dot class is actually not decorated or been identified by spring boot as a component so if we give this as a component here and now if we try executing this spring boot uh, application or the spring basic application you will see that it is going to execute and also tells that car instantiated toyota car so because we call this get bean method it is going to call call this get the car dot class and then it's going to call the get car method and now you may be wondering that you have not even instantiated the constructor here but how come this car instantiated is coming so even let's try to comment this like a piece of code and now if you try executing this code i have not even called it as you know and you can see that the car instantiated is coming up the reason being the spring boot while it loads it's going to keep going to see all the components that is exist on this particular class path and then it's going to load all the uh the object like car object and then once again if you watch other videos on spring boot on youtube as well as uh in the documentation you will know that the spring boot is basically a singleton pattern uh, by nature so it, which means it's going to create only one object every time and even if you try to create another object it is not going to create that object for you unless until you make this as prototype something like that so i'm not going to go deep into those areas as well uh, over here but just that to give you a context like how this is working this is what it is so if you specify this guy over here which means it's going to create the uh, object automatically and then it is going to read the method get car and then it's going to print the value for you over here so this is what the spring boot is doing and you can also do one more thing so if let's say if i'm going to remove the spring boot application and if i try to run that there's going to be an exception coming for you like that and you will see that it's going to say that no such bean definition because you have actually called the get bean of application context and the application context is basically not going to be there when you do it or you can actually call what is called as a component uh, scan something like this and now if you try executing it you will see that this thing will work as well so instead of spring boot application i'm just giving component scan and it's working you may be asking like how come spring boot application if i change it to component scan it's still working well if you go to the component scan you will see that it's going to call the component scan over here it's basically it's like a custom annotation built by the spring boot itself which is going to do all those scanning for you to perform the operation and if you go just change this component scan to probably spring boot application and if you click that you will see within the spring boot application you already have different annotation uh, like target retention uh, spring boot configuration enabled auto configuration component scan as well along with some filters uh, over here so you can basically scan different class paths so if the class is sitting on a different class path you can also specify that and then you can execute it so for showing that example probably what i can do is like i can go to the spring basic application test over here and let's say if i want to uh, call the application context that i have written over there so i can just do application context application context is equal to spring application dot run of the spring basic application dot class over here and then i can just call the exact same thing over here like whatever i have did on the application and if i try executing it 
you will see that uh, not this one sorry on the test side maybe I can just comment this code because it's gonna throw us an error you'll see that it is working for us and it's also gonna print the car instantiated and Toyota car the reason being it's working for us over here is just because the component scan is already exist on the Spring Boot test. As I told you that Spring Boot test has got the whole bootstrap of the Spring application context itself. So it can read everything for us over here, which is really, really cool. So this is only happening because Spring Boot test has control of the whole container, not just the uh, the level of its own container but it can go and read even the containers uh, which is uh, the packages which is sitting within the main application containers as well so this is the real power of the spring boot test and that's why we are going to be using spring boot test annotation a lot for our automation testing and that's what we'll be focusing on as well so you got the idea right now, like the application context component uh, scan, how the Spring Boot uh, application and the components of the car are actually being used, like a get bean and all those things. We got a bit of idea right now. And now we can actually talk about the context injection uh, of how we can actually fix this particular error that we are getting using the auto wired in a constructor dependency injection in our next lecture.